Hey everyone, Shinitsu here, and one of my YouTube friends, Immat1331, has been requesting that I make a paint side tutorial, and I thought it would not only help him, but would help others as well. Okay, before I keep rambling on, and this is honestly like the tenth time I've done this, and I'm not doing it again, let's get right into this paint side tutorial. So first of all, we're just going to go over the basics of this. We're going to, well, you open a new canvas by doing this. I usually just use rather regular letter paper and you press ok. Let us go over the basics of setting up your canvas before we go into the actual all of this. You can change the size or the height or the width by typing in something new. Say if you wanted to be taller, that's pretty weird looking. But or change the width, type it in and you get a wider canvas and say you wanted to turn your canvas you would just press one of these and now it's vertical and now it's horizontal I am not the ultimate expert on paint tool side honestly this is just the basics because I haven't really gone that deep into what it can do but we're doing the basics so let me explain to you what these tools do let us go to our pictures and we are gonna open up a pretty picture to mess around with. Let's use a picture of Kaname. Oh yeah, Kaname. Okay, so we're gonna go these tools and looking at the beautiful Kaname. So here goes nothing. These tools up here are these are all selection tools. Shut up. These are all selection tools. Ugh, I said shut up. So say you wanted to select Kaname's eye, you go over it. And BAM! His eye has been selected, and you can cut it out, edit, cut, and his eye is gone. And then to clear it, you just press clear. And also another thing you do is you want, if you would like to select everything outside of the box, selection invert. And now, if you press edit, cut, everything but the box will be cut. So, that's how invert works. Next we have the whip, little whip. And you can draw around it. Say you wanted to just get his eye. You wanted to cut out his eye. So his eye is now gone. Now for the magic pen tool. Wait one second, I gotta open one of my drawings. Okay, say you have her hair here. Alright, and you would like to select her hair. So you press the little magic wand, press her hair, and her hair gets selected. Like that. You want to select all of her. There. She's all, all selected. Now, the rule about this tool is it'll only select something that is enclosed. Say, if there was the eraser, if I were to create a gap in her hair and then try to select it, it won't work anymore. It'll select everything. Okay, next tool, this tool moves around. You grab something and you can move it around. It's pretty simple. Say you wanted to select Kaname's eye again. You can move it around and move it wherever you want. Put his eye on his arm. Pretty simple. I've never actually used that tool very much. I don't ever use that tool at all. Next tool is a magnifying glass. Zoom in to find details. And you can see the smudges in the line art. Beautiful. Zoom in, find details, or zoom out, like so. Pretty simple. Or you can just use this scroll roll thing on your mouse, and which I find much easier. And this turns your canvas. Woo! Next we have the drag tool, where you can move it all around. And now we have the dropper tool. Here's what I usually use this for. You say, say you just really, really love Kaname's skin tone. You're like, man, that has some nice skin tone. I would love to use that skin tone. Well, just click on whatever skin tone you would like. Say you want this, you click it, and bam. Now you have his skin tone. And now you can use his skin tone to color in your character or as close as paint tool side can get to that skin tone. Or say you wanted to copy his eye color. Now you've got his eye color. You can just click on whatever you want and you get the color. 
I regularly steal skin tones because skin tones are hard to get. And it's hard to get right color from materials as well. So feel free to use reverence pictures and steal the color from them. It's pretty handy, I must say. I do it all the time. Now, okay, let's move on to these, the really important ones. First of all, we got your pencil. Basic thing. This is how you change the size. Big. Smaller. Small. And I must tell you, when you are drawing with a tablet, it is sensitive to your touch. So the lighter you draw, the lighter the line will be. Since I cannot hook up my microphone and tablet at the same time, I cannot show you. But with a mouse, you see, the pressure is always going to be the same. But if you were to have a tablet and stroke lightly, it would come up light. As if you were actually drawing, which is why tablets are awesome. Okay, next one is the airbrush. I think that's pretty simple. It's an airbrush. And what more can you say? Next up is a brush. And pretty simple. If you see, if you just make one press, how the colors kind of merge together and is darker as it goes on. One, see, the more time you press, the darker it gets. That's a brush. Like, now you have watercolor, which is watercolor. And watercolor smears together. You can blend colors. You can draw lightly and blend, just like real watercolors. They don't work quite as well as real watercolors, but as good as paint of size going to allow you. A marker, with marker, it's gonna be one tone, no matter how much pressure you put down. Eraser, I don't think I have to explain eraser. Okay, now is another selection tool, a very useful selection tool, I must say. So say you use a magic wand. Okay, say you select his hair, but now you zoom in and look at all these little spots. You see where the selection tool didn't get it? Whether that's because my liner is messy or not, I can't say. <laughs> but you take your selection tool and you draw it in you just color and you select the parts you want to select and you can clean up his hair and select all of his hair instead of just a little bit or say you want to select just his eye you can just draw and select his eye and the select erase tool erases the selection. So say you don't want to select his eye, then you can erase the selection. And then once you click off the selection, his hair will be selected. Now I don't use the bucket tool ever, but it just fills in. So if you don't want to use the selection tools, it just fills it in. With the bucket tool, you don't actually have to select it. You can just fill in it in as long as it is enclosed but I never use the bucket tool just because I just don't. And I can honestly say I've never used the legacy pen before. So my knowledge to that is um, I can't help you with that because some of these tools, I honestly, I just don't use them. And then these are just, you know, different types of art supplies that you would have. Paper, acrylic, canvas, acrylic, different styles of uh, different textures of drawing tools like a crayon shows up like a crayon you just have to play around with that okay now for the blur tool but say you get your brush and you color that and then say you use a lighter color right next to it you can blur it together so that the line is not so harsh and you get a nice shading transition from one color to the next which is very useful when coloring and the smaller the blur tool, the less it blurs. So if you use a really big one, it's gonna blur the entire thing. Okay, I never explained these up at the top, but these are all the color things. I can't say I use that many of them, but I usually just use these. It's because you can select whatever color you want, and then you have this entire spectrum of light and dark versions of that specific color. So say that I colored her hair in green. It's now green and oh no what if I ended up not liking that green color and I'm like man I don't like that green color I should probably explain layering real quick because this won't make any sense you have a drawing and you draw a circle and you draw some eyes and a mouth and you're like woo I'm a raindrop Okay, you have your beautiful picture here. You press layer. 
new layer. So now you have another layer. And now you can draw whatever hairstyle you want on your dude. There. And now you go to this layer and you can erase the inside without being scared of erasing the hair. Let's say if you were to draw this on all on one layer. Oh, this is a good time to explain how to combine layers. You press the top layer, you click this, transfer down layer, and it will transfer down everything to one layer. And also a good time to explain hiding layers. You can press this eye, you can hide the layer. That way, I'll go back. You want to hide the hair and just work on the face, it's much easier that way. So we're going to transfer down our layer. Now we have this layer, and if you drew the hair all in one layer, and if you're trying to erase the inside, you might, oh no, you might accidentally erase the hair in the process, which is not good. And say you don't like the hairstyle at the first, so you can just go back and erase the hairstyle without messing up the head or anything, because it's on a separate layer all by itself, and you can just draw his hair again. That is how layering works. Hopefully that wor that explains it. Now back to what we were doing here. Your her hair selected because you did not like that color. You have go to the layer, select the layer with the color on it because you want to color on a different layer than the line art. And then you go filter, hue and saturation, and you can mess around with these. And you can change your hair color. Say you want her hair color to be this color. Yes. Okay. And then selection clear. Now her hair is now pink and you do not have to recolor it. That is very nice. So you have your beautiful picture. One very important thing that it took me a while to learn about Paint Sai is your line art layer must be your top layer and layers are your friends. I have 25 layers for this picture. I have used a ton more on other drawings. It's insane. Why your line art layer must be the top layer the top because if it is not and you color on top of the line art layer your line art will go away no more line art because you've just colored on top of it but if you move your line art to the top your line art comes through which is what you want and what I usually do with coloring is I would draw a base coat of the base color that I want create a new layer on top of the base coat and that is the layer that I will do the shading on. That way you can keep redoing the shading without redoing the base coat. Very useful layer. How to delete layers is you just drag it up to this little trash can and gone. So you finally finish your drawing. Hours of love and labor. What you want to do is you go file. Save as. See it says dot side. That is the type of file it is. And it will only open up a paint tool side. But you will like to put your picture into DeviantArt or somewhere else. So you want to click down here and now you can turn it into whatever you would like. Paint Paintosai, Photoshop, that thing, whatever. What I usually do is I press JPEG and then you would name it something new just to make sure. And now you can save it as a JPEG and what that would do is it will combine all your layers and save it as a JPEG. So save. and. I've never been 100% sure what these does. What this does, if anyone would like to explain it to me, please do, but I always just like do that. Doesn't seem to change the quality, I don't know. Press OK. And if you would to go to your pictures, I said pictures, there it is. Now it is a JPEG instead of a paint tool sci file. Yay! And now your picture is complete and done and beautiful. Okay. So we have this other, this picture of Ichijo, okay? We are going to select his beautiful face. And we're going to open a new file. We're going to take this, we're going to edit, cut, edit, paste. And now we have this really tiny picture of Ichijo. We're like, man, I want to make that bigger because I can't see Ichijo's beautiful face. It's so tiny, how am I supposed to see that? Well. What you want to do is you want to go layer. This comes in really handy. I use this all the time, so pay attention, kids. Transform right here under layer. Click. And now you can make it whatever shape you want. You can slip horizontally, vertically, blah, blah, blah. 
and hold down the shift key so that it does not you can like make it really like that it'll do that if you do not hold down the shift key hold down shift and now we can make Ichijo as big as we want and we can fill up the entire page with this beautiful face there we go fill the entire page with this beautiful face and we press ok now we have a giant beautiful picture of Ichijo's face and we have eliminated all of these people in the background and we just have a picture of Ichijo which is awesome why is this so useful well say that you draw the head too small you can make it bigger and you don't have to redraw it say you drew the hair not big enough you can make it bigger it's a very very useful tool and now finally my paint side tutorial is done i really especially hope in matt 1331 liked it as it was for him goodbye everyone hope this helped and hope my rambling wasn't too horrible and I will see you all in another video very soon. Bye!